Hello, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce our next keynote speaker, uh, who is Hitoshi Okamoto. And he received his PhD back in 1988 from Tokyo University um, and has served in a variety of positions um, at different places in the world and is currently uh, the team leader in the Lab for Neural Circuits Dynamics of Decision Making at the Center for Brain Sciences in uh, the uh, Regan Kao Collaboration Center. And he's going to be giving us a talk uh, on his uh, recent findings on the habenula. And I will turn it over to him now. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Brad, for uh, inviting me to this uh, symposium. It's actually my first time to give a talk through the webinar. So uh, today I'm going to talk about fighting of animals. So uh, any animal works uh, fight cons uh, with conspecifics, the Indians, uh, bears, horse, elephants, leopards, or even the gorillas in the zoo actually fight. So today I'm going to talk about the fight of zebrafish. So if you actually isolate two male zebrafish for uh, more than 24 hours and put them together back to the same tank, then these two fish start fighting. So the, the way they fight is very stereotyped, formulated, fast displaying and circulating, circling around the others, and then biting the side bodies of the opponent. And eventually one becomes a winner and the other becomes a loser. Actually 10 minutes after the fight is over, you can actually quite easily tell which fish has become the winner and which fish has become the loser. So this is 10 minutes after the fight is over, the loser is actually staying very quietly at the bottom of the tank and the winner is uh, swimming freely at the center of the tank. So today I would like to persuade that the one uh, pathways uh, from the habenula to the interpeduncular nucleus actually plays an important role in the, the regulation of this conspecific fight. The habenula is very much conserved evolutionarily from fish to mammals and the pathway from the habenula to IPN, interpeduncular nucleus, is also very much conserved. So in case of the zebra fish, the habenula is largely subdivided into the dorsal habenula and the ventral habenula. And the dorsal habenula send out the axons to the interpeduncular nucleus. And then the dorsal habenula can be, is further subdivided into the lateral subnucleus and the medial subnucleus. And the neurons in the lateral subnucleus project to the dorsal half of the interpeduncular nucleus. And the neurons in the medial subnucleus project to the ventral half of the interpeduncular nucleus. There's another component of the habenula called ventral habenula, which actually send the axons to the median lafay. So there are three components in the zebrafish habenula. So uh, the lateral subnucleus of the dorsal habenula project to the dorsal IPN, and then the neurons in the dorsal IPN further send the axon to the uh, structure called dorsal tegmental, tegmental area. So this area in zebrafish actually uh, are uh, evolutionarily homologous to the mammalian periarchitectal gray, PAG. And as is known that PAG is responsible for the the control of the innate fear uh, response to the, 
to the threat. So the uh, most anterior part of the uh, PAG is if it is stimulated electrically, then the animal takes a position as if they are trying to fight back. And if the most caudal part is stimulated, animal takes the uh, behavior as if they are escape, uh, escaping or flight. And if the ventral lateral position was uh, stimulated, animal flees. So uh, three different areas of PAG actually uh, regulate the different uh, response to the set. So considering the connection from the IPN with the uh, equivalent of the PAG, we wondered whether the, this pathway from the habenula to IPN and then dorsal tegmental area may have something to do with the regulation of pathway uh, of social conflict. So indeed, when we actually uh, removed the brain of the winner, as soon as the fighting was over and the made the uh, longitudinal slice, including the habenula and the IPN and the soak the slice uh, in the solution containing the calcium indicator, uh, Oregon green papta, then we stimulated the habenula, we can actually uh, visualize the propagation of excitation starting from the habenula in the winner's brain. So as you see that the uh, excitation start from the habenula and the IPN, and then it spreads to the dorsal tegmental area. In contrast, when we actually stimulate the habenula of the brain from the loser, then we actually see the spread of excitation from the habenula to IPN. Then after IPN, the excitation propagate not to the dorsal tegmental area, but to the uh, median lafe in the post, uh, posterior to IPN. So it uh, gives us the impression that the IPN is acting as a switchboard uh, which uh, downstream targets should be activated depending on whether the animal is a winner or the loser. And this pathway uh, of propagation in the win winner's brain actually correspond to this red pathway starting from the lateral subnucleus of the dorsal habenula. And then this pathway uh, uh, in the scene in the loser corresponds to this green pathway starting from the medial subnucleus of the dorsal habenula. So this red pathway may be putatively the winner's pathway and the red, uh, this green pathway may be the uh, loser's pathway. So pro to prove that, we actually established two transgenic lines in which uh, either the uh, lead pathway or the green pathway is specifically inactivated by the activation, uh, by the expression of tetanus toxin in the axon termini. And see how such uh, fish actually uh, behave. So when we inactivated the putatively winner's pathway from the dorsal, uh, la dorsal lateral uh, habenula, then uh, essentially uh, such fish in most cases lost. In contrast, when we actually inactivated the putatively the loser's pathway, so such fish actually almost all cases won the fight. So this manipulation of the fish actually proved our hypothesis that this lead pathway uh, starting from the lateral subnucleus of dorsal habenula is for the winner. And this green pathway starting from the medial subnucleus of the dorsal habenula is for the loser. 
So, uh, so this red pathway um, is involved in uh, making the winner fish to behave as winner. And then uh, this green pathway is involved in making the loser fish to behave as loser. So uh, then we actually wondered what actually synaptic change uh, is responsible for uh, this uh, uh, dominance of winner's pathway or the dominance of loser's pathway. So uh, to uh, examine that kind of things, we first examined how the loser's path, uh, pathway is affected by losing experience. So we actually made the slice, including the IPN, and uh, made the patch clamping experiment uh, targeted at the uh, neuron in the ventral IPN. So these are the neurons. Cell bodies are located at the intermediate zone of IPN, but their dendrites spread throughout the ventral IPN. So we actually uh, examined. Uh, so one thing uh, that we noticed is that uh, when we excited the input axons from the habenula electrically, uh, in case of the a winner, almost half of the neurons did not respond to the stimulation of the habenula axons. But in the loser, uh, almost 100% of the axon uh, of the neurons in the uh, IPN actually responded. So, in, uh, in, so the neurons in the IPN were kind of unsilenced by the losing experience. So to examine uh, what is the cause for this unsilencing uh, of the neurons, we actually uh, examined, uh, analyzed the pattern of the excitation of patch clamp neurons. So these are the uh, from winner and these are from losers. And then we actually compared the activation time. So we noticed that in the loser's uh, uh, neurons, so we actually observed many spikes, uh, many uh, currents that actually have much uh, shorter uh, activation time as compared to the most uh, currents observed in the winner. So this change in the activation pattern actually suggested that different type of uh, neurons uh, of receptors were expressed in the loser's uh, neuron. And also suggested that uh, con uh, considering that uh, cal calcium permeable type and per receptor has uh, shorter uh, activation time. So the component of the AMPA receptor uh, expressed on the neurons may have changed. Indeed, when we treated the uh, slice with the antagonist against the calcium permeable type AMPA receptor, the neurons from the loser were, uh, the uh, currents were more affected. So uh, unsilencing seen in the loser's brain, a uh, loser's IPN appears to be uh, caused by the expression of calcium permeable type or GLU-8 to lacking ampere receptor. So we further asked what is the cause for the uh, change in the uh, const, uh, components of AMPA receptor. So the uh, loser's pathway, the habenular loser's pathway express glutamate 
and uh, acetylcholine. So we wondered whether the cholinergic transmission may be responsible for this change. So, so, so this is the uh, probability of first type of the uh, current. So as I already explained in the loser's brain, uh, IPN, uh, we see the drastic increase. So, but uh, quite interestingly, when we actually treated the slice uh, with the alpha-7 specific nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonist. Uh, so the, even the uh, slice from the winner's brain, the uh, expression probability of the first type catch up to the level of the loser. And we actually uh, also treated the slice with nicotine but, and then the effect of nicotine was inhibited by uh, specifically by the presence of the alpha-7 type antagonist. So this experiment actually suggested that the increase in the uh, expression of calcium permeable amper receptor was due to the action by way of the alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptor expressed in the, these silent neurons. So that was the uh, plasticity happening in the loser's brain in the ventral part of IPN. And the dorsal part of IPN also shows very much dynamic plasticity, especially depending on the uh, actually internal condition of the fish. One interesting finding that we made was about the starved fish. When you actually, uh, when we starved the fish, one day, two days, six day, and then seven day, only the fish starved for more than six days showed the quite different uh, fighting pattern. That is, these starved fish always won the fight. So this is the winning weight. So we actually wondered what is the cause for this fight? And then as you see here, if you let two starved fish fight, these fish fight significantly longer than the other combinations. That suggested that starved fish never gives up the fight until the opponent actually gives up. So we actually wondered whether this change in the behavior uh, may be caused by the uh, uh, activation of the uh, winner's pathway from the habenula. So we actually genetically silenced the, uh, this winner's pathway. And then we saw that uh, in such fish, starvation did not make the fish prone to win. And then we actually exam we examined how the excitation propagated from the habenula. And that what was interesting to us was that the propagation pattern of excitation from the habenula uh, to IPN was very close to the winner's pattern. So that is that the excitation further propagated to the dorsal tegmental area. So this propagation pattern was observed in the starved fish even before they actually experienced uh, fighting. So even before the fight, the, the excitation pattern was that of the winners. So we wondered what is uh, actually happening in the 
IPN neurons in the dorsal IPN. And then uh, we also analyzed the each uh, miniature EPSC current and compared between non-starved fish and uh, six-day starved fish. So we actually uh, observed the miniature EPSC change in six-day starved fish as, as shown. That is the increase in this case in the uh, miniature EPSC with longer excitation time. So, so then we learned the literature search and then we actually found that many AMPA receptor actually transcript has two type of uh, uh, mature messenger RNA. One type is called flip type by uh, the inclusion of the exon 15 and the other type is called uh, flop type. And if on the, on the uh, AMPA receptor translated from the flip type mRNA has a uh, longer opening time as compared to flop type. So we actually wondered whether the, the, there is actual increase in the expression of flip time, flip type in the stabbed fish. So we treated the uh, slice from the stabbed fish with the uh, cyclothiazide, which uh, specifically enhance the activity of the flip type. So the influence of this uh, drug is much augmented in the six day stabbed fish. We did the opposite experiment uh, by treating the slice with thiocyanate, uh, which is the antagonist against the flip type. And then we could actually see the influence of uh, thiocyanate, thiocyanate, only in the uh, uh, starved fish. So, these two experiments support that the, there is an increase in the expression of flip type AMPA receptor in the starved fish. So we actually examined whether there is actual increase in the flip type messenger RNA in the starved fish. And indeed we actually observed the significant increase in the expression level of GRI-A3B, which is the transcript uh, in the starved uh, fish. So it appears that starvation caused the biased alternative splicing, uh, enhancing the production of the flip type uh, AMPA receptor. So we actually further wondered which actually caused this biased alternative splicing and wondered whether the, some uh, cells which are activated by starvation may be uh, involved. And the uh, olexin or hypocretin neurons in the hypothalamus is known to be activated and send axons to the many places of the brain. So this is the olexin neurons in the hypothalamus in fish. Uh, and then uh, 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 and then uh, axons from uh, these olexin neurons actually certainly innovate the dorsal part of the interpedanticular nucleus. We could luckily uh, obtain this fish from uh, Dr. Uh, Dio from Israel.
So, uh, so we treated the size uh, of the naive fish with orexin and see whether the similar change seen in the starved fish can be observed. So indeed, that the propagation pattern was actually skewed toward the uh, dorsal IPN uh, as compared to the naive fish, similarly uh, uh, to the uh, starved fish. And indeed, we could also observe the biased alternative splicing by the treatment of uh, of the flip type F messenger RNA of, of, of agree A3B uh, by treatment with orexin A. And then uh, uh, we could also express by the uh, nitro detectase and treated the uh, slice with uh, metal nitro, uh, 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 treated the fish with metal nidazole, which actually kills the orexin neurons. So uh, then in that case, uh, so effect of the starvation is actually, uh, is uh, not seen uh, as compared to the, uh, uh, wild type starved fish. So this also support that the orexin neurons is responsible for this change of the uh, fighting pattern. So summarizing this data, uh, hunger actually activate the orexin neurons in the hypothalamus and then uh, uh, activated uh, the uh, affected the splicing pattern of the AMPA receptor to actually enhance the alternative splicing for the flip type of GUR3. And this actually potentiate the uh, signaling from the habenula to IPN and eventually to dorsal tegmental area. And that caused starvation induced winning. So uh, this may be part of the course for uh, what uh, Steve Jobs says, to win in your life, stay hungry and stay foolish. And then lastly, I would like to mention about the unexpected finding of the role of the uh, dorsal habenula. We actually examined whether fish can learn two rules so uh, this is a kind of a plus maze experiment uh, test for fish. And the fish can actually start from one arm of this plus maze and then requested to make a choice whether to run, turn right or left to get the food. And then we impose two different rules. One rule is fish is asked to turn always right or maybe left or to the same direction, regardless of the color of the goal. Then uh, in the second rule, fish is requested to turn to the same color, uh, always red, regardless of the which side of the arms uh, the color actually is indicated. So this is an example of the directional rule behavior so fish is requested to turn light, regardless of the gold color. Fish can behave properly. And this is an example of the behavior cued rule. So fish is requested to turn to the red goal, regardless of the direction. This time he made a mistake. 
But in most cases, fish can learn two rules. And then we can actually alternate the rule which we impose on fish. And then uh, as you repeat the change of the rule, fish can more and more quickly adapt to the imposed rule. And then we actually wondered whether this connection from the Habenua to IPN may have something to do with the uh, uh, behavior according to the directional rule. Because uh, so this structure, as you may notice, have some left-right asymmetry. So we wondered whether they may be also involved in the behavior related to left and right. And indeed, actually, uh, more than half of the fish which had the which has the inactivation of the lateral subnucleus of the dorsal habenula can never learn the directional loop, while they can still learn perfectly the rule according to the presented color. So this part of the habenula uh, from the lateral subnucleus of the dorsal habenula uh, to the dorsal IPN, that is the winner's pathway, is also involved in the decision-making according, uh, based on the uh, direction. And uh, actually the fish inactivated with this circuit show the enhanced active uh, capacity to uh, learn the color-based loop. So we interpret that, that this red circuit, the winner circuit is also involved in giving the atten uh, atten uh, increasing the attention of the fish to oneself, uh, to one's own uh, status uh, or the internal status or left or right. And then uh, this loser circuit may be also in controlling the, their attention to the outside. So in, uh, in other words, the winner's fish care only by them, only them by care only themselves, but the losers fish may care outside, uh, including the winners. This is actually consistent with the recent data obtained in uh, mouse. So there, uh, it's known, it's shown that the dominant mouse uh, prefrontal cortex shows the activity synchronized with its own movement, but the uh, uh, loser's uh, or the subordinate mouse uh, prefrontal cortex neuron shows the activity uh, synchronized with the movement of the dominant mouse, not himself. So Habenira may be acting as a switchboard to whether uh, the attention should be directed to oneself or to outside. And uh, it's also interesting uh, uh, that uh, recently uh, the group by Ruben Portugues reported that if the larval fish was presented with a streaming uh, dots with a mixture of different direction. And, and then they actually uh, ultimately interpret uh, in which direction as a whole these dots are streaming. And then depending on their decision, they flip the tail. But uh, before the, uh, the, the uh, fish flip the tail, the IPN is activated some part of IPN is activated. And then activity, for example, the light anterior IPN is activated, uh, actually indicates there's a high probability of uh, flipping to the right direction, I, I, maybe left, I can't remember precisely, but has a close uh, co correlation with the activity of IPN. So IPN is also involved in the 
coordination of the flip, uh, tail flip. So uh, at this moment, we actually don't know uh, how these things are coordinatedly regulated, but uh, uh, Habendra IPN pathway may be acting as a simultaneous coordinator of the attention, whether to attend oneself or attend outside, and also behave winner or the losers. So we need to further study how these uh, winner's pathway and loser's pathways actually interact with each other at the circuit level. And also, of course, we need to study whether this circuit is uh, composed uh, in the uh, conserved both throughout the evolution. So uh, this study was actually performed by many uh, past and present members of my lab, as shown here, and in collaboration with the outside collaborator. And I want to express my special thanks to uh, Leo, Dr. Leo Appelbaum in Israel for giving me, giving us the precious strain for, uh, in relation with the uh, hypocritin. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was really fascinating. Um, I would like to start off with a question of my own, actually. Um, what, what is the evolutionary advantage of losing in a fight like this? Mm. Is, there, is there any reason to do it? Mm. To just sort of look for a balance between winning and losing? Yeah, so uh, losing, losing actually, so unless somebody actually uh, stopped fight, uh, fish actually continue to fight. That is a waste of energy. Mm. So uh, some type of uh, hierarchy must be formed uh, to make a peace. And then also the winner stopped for actually attacking as long as the loser actually stopped uh, fighting. So in fact, we actually have the data that uh, the other part of the habenula called ventral habenula may be involved in the... Uh, so this is the fish in which the ventral habenula is inactivated. So even the fish lose, this fish continue to come back to the uh, central part of the tank and he, he keeps getting the attack by the winner. So this status is really the waste of time. So in, in some sense, uh, to actually cause some kind of peaceful situation, uh, this pathway is actually useful. Right, so it's sort of like a co-evolutionary strategy. Yeah. That you need a population of people, yeah. of fish who are willing to win and lose. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask you some questions then from the, from the attendees. Uh, Elizabeth Hansen asks, on what time scale does AMPA-R composition return to normal after starvation? Uh -huh. After starvation. So mm -hmm. you mean that uh, so after feeding? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Ha. Huh. Actually, we haven't uh, checked uh, that. Okay. Actually, zebra fish can withstand the starvation for quite a long time. Uh, even if you actually starve the fish for one month, they can survive. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. They don't have a lot of fat. I yeah, I don't know how, what kind of metabolism makes that possible, but uh, they can withstand a very long time. Do they transition into a low metabolism state at some point? It's actually an interesting probably research field. Yeah. But I don't know. Okay. All right. We have a, another question here from Sebastian uh, Meili. Uh, sorry if I've mispronounced that name. And it is this. Thanks for the great talk. 
Have you tried manipulating Habenula IPN after a fight to determine whether a specific phenotype can be induced regardless of the outcome of the fight? I see. That's also another interesting experiment. But uh, to do that, uh, we need to, yeah, we can do optogenetic experiment and it's theoretically possible, but uh, we haven't tried. Especially connecting the optic fiber and letting the fish fight is a bit difficult. Uh, probably the uh, connected fiber may come off. Uh, Blood, you're- Yeah, sorry, I'm muted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess optogenetic would work if you had only one of the fish, then you could just shine a Maybe. light the entire yeah. tank. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, Takashi asks, do you have some idea how the HB IPN pathway interacts with hypothalamic areas controlling aggression? Does the PAG mm. integrate information from both areas? Mm. Yeah. So as you know, that hypothalamus is uh, related to the initiation of fight. So we actually think that this uh, pathway from the Habeni to the IPN may have something more to do with the termination of fight or the giving up the fight. And we actually don't know how they mutually interact each other. That's also interesting subject, but we don't know the answer, sorry. So it may actually, uh, PAG may have some, hmm. PAG is obviously the downstream target of hypothalamus. And we are, I, I actually don't know whether there is reciprocal connection. So do you think there's a deep causal connection between this idea of attending to others and losing a fight? Or do they perhaps just both coexist within the same circuit? Yeah, so attending to, so the winners actually don't care what others are doing. So they actually care only by themselves. And then the losers have to pay more attention to what others are doing, whether they are attacking or something. So it's actually uh, consistent to, uh, with a uh, kind of a, it's reasonable, but actually I don't know the true mechanistic explanation at this moment. Right. So do you think it's fair to say that this would sort of be